Taylor Swift versus Travis Kelsey. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. A narcissist can attract another narcissist in the context of an intimate relationship. There are different outcomes that depend upon the different sub-schools. I've explained in my excellent videos when narcissists collide parts one and two instances of differing combinations of narcissists and how they interact and gel or don't in relation to familial, social and romantic spheres. In some instances, you have the process of narcissistic cementation, which I have explained more about in a video of that name. Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are both narcissists, but they're of differing subschools. They are able to control one another for the time being, because there is a mutual interest with regard to publicity. He gets the all-American, very popular pop star, which enhances his profile. She gets the reasonably handsome, rough-and-ready, all-American sports star. Accordingly, it makes for something of a power couple. They're both able to feed one another fuel. Their displays to the outside world prompts various reactions which exhibit control and, of course, draw in massive amounts of fuel. NFL attendance has increased as a consequence of Swift's involvement at certain games. This enhances the profile of Travis Kelsey, perhaps leading to residual benefits for him by way of increased salary. The fact is, for the time being, they're both able to obtain the prime aims from one another and also in tandem from those around them. But as often the case, this supposedly idyllic relationship has an expiration date upon it. First of all, Swift is not somebody that has particularly lengthy relationships. Her six-year relationship with Joe Alwyn was something of an outlier with regard to a comparison with many of her other intimate relationships, which I've analysed in the past, which are commensurate with the draw-them-in-eat-them-up-spit-them-out approach of the greater narcissist that is Taylor Swift. Travis Kelsey will have difficulties with regard to the fact that ultimately he's second fiddle to Swift. She's more famous, wealthier, better known than him. Sure, he is certainly well known. He, he's well off himself. But in this relationship, he plays second fiddle. And that's not something that a narcissist enjoys. Accordingly, what might happen to them? And indeed, that bastion of journalistic excellence, Heat Magazine... I suppose the question, is Travis Kelsey tired of being Mr. Taylor Swift? Well, the short answer to that is, yes, he will be, because he doesn't want to be seen as second fiddle to her. His need for control and the necessity of nullification of that threat to control poses a problem for the relationship. He, of course, must remain under her control, and if he starts to show signs whereby he's not, that would result in devaluing behaviour from her, which of course would then threaten his own need for control over her, which would then result in a tempestuous explosion between the two. The article explains he's been trotting around the globe after his megastar girlfriend, packing on the PDAs everywhere from Sydney to Singapore. Now, he's been doing that which shows that he's under control. But his narcissism deems that it's appropriate to go down that route because it serves his purposes. It results in people praising him for being a dutiful boyfriend, thus providing him with fuel. Taylor Swift approves of his behaviour and supposed support in that regard, which provides him with fuel, and she responds in a way that demonstrates that she is under control. Thus, they're both getting what they want but there'll be a limit to how long he'll go along with that. The article explains, Insiders tell us there are concerns in Travis Kelsey's camp that he might not have the stamina, time or money to keep up with Taylor Swift. The Kansas City Chiefs player has spent the last few months supporting his partner of nine months, so they're still in a golden period, on her era's tour while the football season is on a break, but it's taking its toll. 
Travis knew what he was signing up for with Taylor, but her lifestyle is still a shock, says an insider close to the 34-year-old football star. He's told friends that she's superhuman because she never needs any downtime. The status of her as a greater narcissist. She's machine-like. And she expects the same from him. She's always up at the crack of dawn. This is demonstrative of the drive of this greater narcissist, always striving to ensure that her shows are the best, which enables her to control and draw fuel. If it's a show day, she's rehearsing, and she expects him to get up and watch, sense of entitlement, assertion of control. And on a day off, there's always work to be done that he has to be there for. Then she's asking him to fly out to see her again in a week or less. It's really wearing on him. Thus, she's issuing the repeated demands upon him for the purposes of ensuring that he's controlled. There's also the fact that being her beau doesn't come cheap. According to reports, Travis has spent more than $8 million during their relationship, splashing out on presents, bribery, travel, and even a new mansion in Kansas City, which offers Taylor Swift all the privacy and luxury she might need residual benefits. While Travis is mega rich himself, he's in the midst of a four-year contract worth $57.25 million. That's nothing compared to Taylor's reported $1.1 billion fortune. And there's concern his bank balance could take a serious hit. Now, a hit to his bank balance would be a threat to that residual benefit, being a threat to control. As for their chances of making it long-term, his camp are wondering if at some point He'll no longer be happy in her shadow. Travis is getting teased for being henpecked, and it's messing with his ego a bit, says our source. Naturally, the suggestion that he's henpecked when he trades on this image of the alpha male, the prime sportsman, is naturally a threat to control. Taylor has multiple assistants who are usually tasked with grabbing her a snack or a drink. But if Travis is there... He's the one she wants to send out, assertion of control, residual benefit. It's like some sort of test. She also has specific orders for him when it comes to supporting her from the side of the stage. It's all so orchestrated and micromanaged. Assuming all of this is accurate, this level of the assertion of control by the greater narcissist over Travis Kelsey is not surprising. But naturally, to begin with, he'll go along with it because he de- he benefits from essentially orbiting the brightest star. But ultimately, he wants to be the brightest star. And when he's the one that's being accused of hen- being henpecked, he's the one that's having to jet around after her. He's the one that's having to spend vast sums of money in relation to her. His narcissism will start to see that she's the one that's always having to jump. He's always the one that's having to attend to her needs. And ultimately, it will start to interpret that as a threat to control with the outcome that he will start to rail against it. And when he does, that will, of course, threaten Taylor Swift's control of him. Thus, this relationship is doomed. And at some juncture, in the not-too-distant future, they will start devaluing one another, and that will ultimately lead to their breakup. Quite when that will be, we can't say with certainty, but it's not too far away. If the reports that he's getting fed up with the way that she's treating him are accurate, already that threat to control is manifesting with the result that his narcissism will simply not let it lie. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.